Joining me now is Pennsylvania's governor and former attorney general, Josh Shapiro. Uh, governor, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me this afternoon. And before we jump into politics, and there's a lot of that to discuss, as a former attorney general of Pennsylvania, I want to get your take on the Supreme Court rulings this week. And after the ruling on LGBTQ plus rights came down, you tweeted this, and I'm just going to read the direct quote. Real freedom means that no matter who you are, who you love, what you look like, or who you do or do not pray to, you belong in Pennsylvania. LGBTQ plus rights are human rights. If SCOTUS won't defend them in D.C., we'll do it in the states. And I have no doubt that gives a lot of people in Pennsylvania some hope. But what can you realistically do as governor? You know, Jen, this was um, a bad week for freedom in this nation, and it's a direct effect um, of our elections back in 2016. Elections have consequences, and we all have a responsibility in this country to defend our freedoms, to defend our democracy, and the best way to do that is to show up and vote. Sadly, this Supreme Court, I fear, over the, you know, the decades to come will continue to try and restrict our freedoms. And it's why the states are so critically important right now. Here in Pennsylvania, we value real freedom. We protect our LGBTQ citizens here in this commonwealth. We stand up for our children. We stand up for real freedom and we protect democracy. We're going to do everything in our power to make sure we have a non-discrimination law on the books that is constitutional and fair and lets every LGBTQ plus individual know that they are valued and welcome here in this commonwealth. This is a moment where folks across this nation need to focus on their state lawmakers, their governors, and work to create real freedoms in their respective of states and commonwealths. As you just said, Governor, elections have consequences. We do have the Supreme Court. We have. And as you look at the rollback of rights over the last year, from overturning Roe v. Wade to, of course, the decisions this week, and given the trajectory, are there other rights you think are at risk? They've clearly gone after precedent. Do you think gay marriage is at risk? Is interracial marriage at risk? What should we be preparing for? I mean, look, I hate to sound like a, like a doomsdayer here, Jen, but, but I think they're, they're all at risk. I mean, for so many, they couldn't have imagined that, um, you know, the, the, the sort of reliance doctrine that existed, uh, along with what I thought was sound legal precedent, around the right to make decisions over your own body, around the right to have an abortion in this country, no one imagined that that could actually be overturned by a Supreme Court who was willing to look the other way on the law and, again, on, on the, the stare decisis that, that existed. The, the reality here is that um, the states are going to have to fill that void. Here in Pennsylvania, we will protect a woman's right to choose so long as I'm governor. We'll protect the LGBTQ community. We'll protect your right to read the books you want and marry who you love. Um, those rights are very much in the crosshairs of this Supreme Court, and we have to do our best in the states to guard against those rollbacks. Turning to politics now, Governor, you're going to be at the center of that, as you're used to being. Uh, and the GOP is cozying up to groups like Moms for Liberty uh, and claiming to be the party of freedom. But you've spoken about what freedom, real freedom is. You talked about that in your inaugural address. You talk about it frequently. How do you think Democrats should go on offense and counter some of this rhetoric of the other side trying to own freedom and rights and, and parental choice? You know, Jen, I, I think this is a stark contrast, and this should not be an issue that Democrats are afraid to lean in on, from the White House to governors to members of Congress, everybody in between. Look, there's a reason why the leading Republican candidates for president are going to visit with that group in Philadelphia this weekend, because they're anti-freedom. I mean, th think about this, Jen. They are showing up to brag about how they want to restrict a woman's right to make decisions over her own body. They are yeah. showing up to brag about how they want to take books out of the classrooms of our children. They are showing up to talk about how they want to attack children for simply being who they are, or adults for wanting to marry who they love. That is not real freedom. Our party, the Democratic Party, is the party of real freedom. This is a clear contrast. And we need to stand up, step up, and speak out on these issues. And I think it says a lot about these Republican candidates that they believe that the path to the nomination of the Republican Party today is bigger, 
government that limits your freedoms. The exact opposite of where the Republican Party was a few decades ago. I think it is a clear contrast. I think it is one of the reasons why we won this race in Pennsylvania. And I think it's a formula for our party's success in the future. We are the party of real freedom. And this weekend in Philadelphia, as these candidates courted that group, I think proves that they are not for real freedom. There's a recent Quinnipiac poll I'm sure you've seen that shows how tight the race between uh, President Biden and former President Trump currently is in Pennsylvania, as it often is. But the poll shows 47 percent for Trump, 46 percent for Biden. Also in that same poll, you have a much higher approval rating by multiples of double digits than President Biden. Now, I know you've been working very closely with the Biden administration implementing economic policy and a lot of these mm -hmm. bills that have passed, but that doesn't appear to be resonating with voters as it as it relates to his approval rating. Why do you think that is? You know, look, Jen, there will be a binary choice at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. It will be President Biden running for reelection against one of these anti-freedom Republican candidates. And when you have that clear binary choice, um, I think it's safe to probably assume it'll be close in Pennsylvania. I mean, 2016 was settled by 40-some thousand votes, 2020 by about 80,000 votes. So I don't think that's any sort of breaking news. But I do think at the end of the day, President Biden is in a strong position to win in Pennsylvania again. And it's because not only is he standing up for real freedom, but because he's delivered for the good people of Pennsylvania. He was my partner in reopening 95 mm. in record time. The federal government was right there with us. He's delivered billions of dollars for our infrastructure. He's been there uh, to make sure that we have the resources we need here in this Commonwealth. And I think as that story uh, is shared throughout um, a, a campaign where there's a clear choice, uh, I think the voters will, will appreciate that. And, and I feel confident in his position. When it comes to that binary choice, uh, there is this possibility of a third party candidate, or there's rumblings of that, I think it's safe to say. And back in 2016, the margin between Trump and Hillary Clinton was a lot smaller than the share of the third party vote in Pennsylvania. How concerned are you right. that a third party candidate could play spoiler in the state in 2024? Yeah, look, I, I, I don't honestly know if that's um, going to be a real possibility or if it's just something folks are talking about right now. Um, I think there will be a, a clear choice at the end of the day between whoever the Republican nominee is and President Biden. And I think he has a lot to make the case here from the infrastructure resources he's delivered to the other support that he's shown Pennsylvania. He's got a really strong story to tell here in the Commonwealth, and uh, I'll be telling that story alongside him. You spearheaded the successful reopening of the I-95 bridge just 12 days after it collapsed. Pretty impressive. As somebody who grew up on the East Coast, it's a That's pivotal, right. pivotal uh, road. We know that uh, not just right. Republicans are skeptical of government and spending, but there is kind of a skepticism in the country of institutions and the effectiveness of government. This is an example of it working. How can you use that as an example to counter that argument out there and kind of rebuild some trust in institutions? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. Look, I mean, as you know, from growing up on the East Coast, I mean, this is a major thoroughfare, 160,000 cars and trucks every day from folks trying to get to work, families going on vacation, trucks trying to get their product to the marketplace. And so when that road quite literally, Jen, just collapsed, the experts said it would take months to reopen. Um, we took an all-hands-on-deck approach. We brought everyone together, federal, state, local uh, folks, engineers and lawyers and others who were needed to get this done. And I said, we're going to work together literally 24-7 and get it done. And we reopened that road in 12 days. They said it couldn't happen, but it did. And as we were going through this process to really get at the heart of your question, I thought it was critically important to show not only the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, but the nation, um, you know, the, what we talk about every day in the governor's office, the GSD attitude, the, the get, you know, get stuff done attitude here. <laughs> and to show it's that a government show. can be a, <laughs> I don't want to get bleeped. Yeah, I don't want to get bleeped. Um, you know, to show that government can be a force 
for good, mm -hmm. that when government comes together, we can solve big problems again. And I think it is a great example um, of the power and the reach of government when we work together, when we do things, Jen, that are common sense, when we don't run to extremes, but we actually run together and work together to focus on results. And um, I was pleased not only that we could get that road reopened uh, in really record time, but I was pleased when I visited the bars and the restaurants in that affected area that had really lost all their customers for those 12 days. I was pleased when I went in there and was just chatting folks up, you know, to try and encourage people to come back to the bars and restaurants. I was encouraged when they said to me, hey, man, look, you know, I didn't think government could do it, but y'all proved me wrong. Uh, you showed what government can do. And that makes me feel good. As someone who believes in the power of government, as someone who believes that we can be a force for good and positive change, the fact that this road reopening helped people see that, I think it's an important message for our Commonwealth and for our country. Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro, thank you for your time this afternoon. <music>